Hi, uh, this is the January 2012 BY1 paper. Uh, this question, uh, which is number one, is looking at the, uh, the structure of organelles. And uh, the examiner here has uh, sort of summarised uh, some common organelles uh, into a flow diagram, as you can see there now. Um, you should be able to identify the organelles described on this flow chart. Um, so I just want to go through this flow chart before we look at the, uh, the questions that have been asked, just to show you what you really should be picking up on before uh, we go any further. So over, over on the left hand side then, I've highlighted in green organelle A, um, it's telling you here that organelle is found in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Um, that, that can only mean one organelle. Um, it's an organelle without a membrane um, because one definition of prokaryotic cells is that they don't have membrane bound organelles. So uh, that organelle would be the ribosome, okay, because it's made up of uh, protein and uh, ribosomal RNA, okay, so no membrane uh, there. Over on the right hand side, then we have. Uh, organelles now found in eukaryotic cells, okay, and obviously there are far more uh, descriptions under this heading because these cells have organelles. All right, so uh, slightly to the left, then um, organelles found in animal cells and plant cells does not contain inner membranes arranged in flattened sacs. Okay, um, so this. This to me suggests that it's not talking about a chloroplast uh, or a mitochondria, okay, because both of those organelles do have an inner membrane, okay. So um, the, that, that, that description there wouldn't be of a chloroplast or a mitochondria. If we look at organelle B, um, it's telling you now it's only found in plant cells and it has membranes, inner membranes, arranged in flattened sacs. So that to me would suggest now it's talking about the, the chloroplast because the inner membranes of the chloroplast are called thylakoids and uh, they often stack on top of each other uh, which gives the, uh, the structure called a granum. Okay. So organelle C now, um, this uh, is looking at a large organelle. All right. Um, it says it has only one found in each cell and it's surrounded by an envelope uh, which there are pores. Now this organelle um, must be the, the nucleus. It is a large organelle, it can be seen with a light microscope and the nuclear envelope does indeed have pores. Okay, so I would say organelle C would be the uh, nucleus. If we have a look at organelle D now, it says it's a smaller organelle, many in the cell, surrounded by an outer membrane. Okay, so there are two organelles really with an outer membrane, um, three if you class the nucleus actually, um, but only two organelles that have an outer membrane and an inner membrane folded. Okay, in this case it says the membrane is folded to form a uh, Christie. Okay, so that would suggest it's an actual mitochondrion there because the inner membrane. Uh, is folded to form these uh, these Christie structure uh, which have um, stalk particles on the surface which uh, generate uh, ATP. Okay then, so let's go down and uh, have a look at the questions that have been set on this uh, information. Now, firstly you're asked to name uh, organelle D. Now, as I've already said, I've said that organelle uh, D is a mitochondrion because of its inner folded Christie. Uh, so the answer there to, to, to part A1 is the mitochondrion. There you go. So the answer now to part A2 describe the function of organelle D. So we have two marks this time. Okay, so uh, we have to write down two, uh, two parts to our answer. One function of the organelle D, um, of course, is to carry out aerobic respiration. That would gain you one mark. Uh, remember now that there are two types of respiration, aerobic and anaerobic. Um, it's aerobic 
that the mitochondria will carry out. So just stating respiration wouldn't get you the mark. It has to be aerobic. And if you say anaerobic, that will definitely be marked wrong because anaerobic respiration does not occur in the mitochondria. So just to repeat, one mark to say um, to carry out or uh, to, to produce um, aerobic respiration. Uh, the next mark then is to mention that because of this aerobic respiration, um, the mitochondria will indeed produce uh, ATP. Um, only remember not to say that the mitochondria produce energy. You have to state that it's the ATP that is formed. Um, so mentioning those two uh, answers there would get you the full marks. There you go. So I've uh, typed in the answer there to uh, part A2. Uh, A3 then, uh, it's asking you to name a cell that contains large numbers of organelle D. Uh, this is again a very common question that's asked quite a lot. Um, the answer to this really depends on how much reading around uh, the subject you've done. Um, the most common answer to this actually would be uh, muscle cells. Okay, Muscle cells carry out uh, contraction and that does require a great deal of energy and consequently will need large numbers of um, mitochondria. Now, um, if uh, if you sit in this paper after you've done BY2, then you could have said uh, the epithelial cells in uh, in the intestines they have large number of mitochondria uh, because they they produce or need ATP for for absorption. Um, so it really depends on on your level of knowledge here as to what answer you put in here. Uh, you could have had sperm cells, of course, they have large numbers of organelle D. Um, so the, 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 the easiest answer there would be uh, muscle, muscle cells. Okay, so uh, I've entered muscle cells there as the answer to part A3. Uh, but as I said earlier, uh, numerous answers that you could have um, for, for that question. All right, let's move on uh, to the next part. Okay, we're up to part B now. And it's asking you which of the organelles A, B, C or D is a ribosome. Okay, so if you remember from uh, earlier, um, we looked at the, the top left uh, hand side of the flow diagram where it talked about an organelle in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Um, that was organelle A. Uh, so the answer to part B there was organelle A. Okay. Um, what is the function of the pores in organelle C? Uh, again, I said earlier organelle C was the nucleus. Now, those nuclear pores, um, many people think it, it's acceptable just to say that they allow things to move in and out of the nucleus. Um, true, it does, but for an exam, you do need to be uh, more specific um, in what you say, and you need to give an example of something that would... Um, uh, enter or leave uh, the nucleus. So um, I'm assuming that you may have done um, DNA and a little bit of protein synthesis in your BY1 topic. Um, if you haven't, when you do do that topic, you'll learn about uh, something called messenger RNA. Um, that's involved in protein synthesis and uh, it's, uh, it's a nucleotide and that is um, something that can actually leave the nucleus. So the answer to part C then would be um, for messenger RNA um, to leave the nucleus um, and that would get you the, the one mark. Okay, I've typed in the answer there to part B and C. Um, now with, with part C I've just put uh, allows transport of messenger RNA. Um, there is another possible answer for that which I haven't put in because it's only worth one mark. Um, the other one would be to allow transport of the ribosomes out of the nucleus. Um, just to remind you that there's a structure within the nucleus called the nucleolus and that's the site at which ribosomes um, are produced. And ribosomes actually function within the, uh, sorry, within the, the cytoplasm. So that would have been a, a, another potential answer for part C. So that's the end of question one uh, on cell structure. I hope you found it helpful.